following show is a paid program. How you doing today? I'm so excited. We have the best in the building, Bridget Smith Lawson, Fort Bend County Attorney. Hey, lady, how you doing? I'm doing great this Man, morning. Man, I'm how so are excited. You? I'm a excited year too. and eight months, is it? Yes, on the campaign trail. Oh my God! <laughs> Just think about it. She's the first African American female in Texas to be a county attorney. First thing I want you guys to do, anybody that wants to call in, congratulate her, ask her questions. Just talk to her and say, thank you so much for breaking the ceiling. 346-874-7267, 346-874-7267. Our topic today is history making in 2020. Mm -hmm. Lady, you are history. <laughs> Yes, you I are am. history, not for Fort Bend County, but for Texas. For Texas, exactly. <laughs> oh my God! And thinking about that, when you were thinking about running, mm -hmm. first of all, why? Well, um, I had to think, <laughs> why not? Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for years um, I had been a public servant, and uh, in the role that I was in, I was working with county attorneys and district attorneys daily. Yeah. Um, just, you know, from emailing them, calling them, uh, working to uh, support their offices, whether they needed um, maybe sample motions or clarification on a legal issue. So just was doing the work um, with them in conjunction with them and, you know, just in the trenches of public service, uh, managing a division of lawyers myself. And when the uh, position was uh, presented to me mm -hmm. and um I was informed that the incumbent was retiring. I had to ask myself, why not? Right. Um, I knew my skill set was congruent. I knew that it was something that I could do. Mm -hmm. And, of course, politics is yeah. politics. And yeah. I had to think about all of those factors and then think about leaving the state, leaving uh, a position that I could uh, retire from right. and stepping out on faith. Yeah. Uh, so, um just had to get rid of the why not <laughs> and, and go for it. As you were running, did it? Dis did you think about you were the one going to be breaking the ceiling? Had you um, won at that time? I did. I did. But, you know, the, the main issue for me was I did not want people just to vote for me because I wanted to break the ceiling or because I was black. I wanted them to know that I was qualified right. to do the position mm -hmm. and just happened to be black yeah. unapologetically so. <laughs> but um, so it was something that I thought about, but I wanted to make sure that the voters knew that voting for me was putting their vote in the hands of someone who was competent right. to do the job. Absolutely. So yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's do this. We'll look back on the trail. Okay. And we'll look and see at the time you were running. All right. Of you speaking to the people at that time. Okay. Let's run it. Let's run that uh, video. Smith Lawson, candidate for the Fort Bend County Attorney position, running on three simple principles, real experience, dedication to public service, and proven leadership ability. I have practiced experience in criminal law, family law, bankruptcy, personal injury, wills and probate, and in addition, immigration, as well as various trainings on civil rights and contract procurement and ethics in contract procurement. that so that you understand that my experience is broad and expanse and that I'm able to navigate several practice areas. Also, I have experience representing individuals, businesses, and governmental agencies. I want to make sure that the county attorney's position supports all of the government functions in a manner that protects our citizens and that provides fair and equitable legal advice. That's what I mean by bridging the courts to the community. Making that county attorney role and all of the governmental agencies that it supports, including the judges, making it relevant and making it positive and impacting our community in a way 
way that moves us from the past and brings us to the present and beyond. I want you to know that I'm the only one that is already a public servant for you right now. I'm the only one that's 17 years licensed as an attorney. I'm the only one that is a member of the Texas District and County Attorney Association, an organization you can't just join unless you are actually doing the statutory work of a county attorney or district attorney. And the only one that has experience. I am the candidate who is here, ready, capable, and for years has already been serving you and just asking for the votes and the opportunity to serve in the county attorney role. My platform includes an 11 point strategy to make the county attorney's office more effective and more efficient in its leadership and servitude to county government to make it provide the legal advice to our governmental agencies of Fort Bend as well as our judges and the sheriff's office to make sure that when the government acts in Fort Bend that it does so in a manner that is positive and progressive and benefits all families of Fort Bend County. That's exactly what I mean by bridging the court. More importantly, as a qualified and experienced attorney, I hope to be the county attorney that makes that office the best that it can be and serves our public in a manner that we expect it to do. Thank you so much. So family, that's Bridget Smith Lawson. Hey, lady. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted people to, to remind people of what platform you're running on. Yes. I wanted people to know uh, that you're very qualified in doing so. Thank and you. now, lady, you've won. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a long journey, but yeah, yes. A long good. journey. Let's, folk, let's go back a little bit when you first started running and mm -hmm. just some of the things we spoke about. That a little bit that you came against, but let's speak to other people that may want to run. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's talk about it. All right. So I would tell you, um, running for office, I was told that it's a, a full contact sport. Yes. And it is. <laughs> <laughs> because um, there's a constant uh, bombardment of different things. You're trying to balance the messaging and the packaging of you as a candidate. Also, you're trying to raise the money to let the campaign run because it is a business and it does have a business aspect in terms of raising money, paying bills. And then you're also dealing with um, just navigating some of the issues that come up, whether it's, you know, uh, issues from your opponent, whether it's, you know, kind of making sure that you're balancing your family life, mm -hmm. uh, your work life, right. which I had to do both. Uh, and um, just basically the, the whole approach of, um, of attacking a campaign, it requires everything from you. And it requires a lot from the people who are around you, your right. family, your friends. Mm -hmm. So anyone who's planning to run for office, don't let this scare you, but just let it make you aware that it's something that if you take on mm -hmm. running for office that you take seriously. Yes. And that you have even your whole village around you supportive of your effort because it will take all of you and all of them right. to be successful. Absolutely. What I loved about uh, when you were running with others, you all were running together. Oh, yes. And each of you helped each other. Exactly. So if you were running in a place or you were knocking on someone's door, mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. you weren't just giving out your literature, you were giving out others' literature. That's right. And let's talk about that, the collaboration, how that helped. Okay. So, uh, of course, you know, there were several candidates on the ballot. Yes. Uh, and several of us who were history makers, like yes. Eric Fagan, yeah. Carmen Turner, we got some judges, Khalid Morgan, Tanika right. Carter, Tian Watson, uh -huh. uh, just a great group of candidates in Fort Bend County is huge, <clears throat> and in order to reach so many doors and, right. and reach the people, we cross-pollinated, mm -hmm. meaning like if I was walking, we were pushing not just my cards, we were pushing other people's cards so that we could right. support our fellow Democratic candidates and push the message uh, collaboratively. And then also, this is sort of a lonely walk, so right. having other candidates on the trail with you gave you emotional, spiritual support. Yes. Um, it, and it really created a camaraderie that, I mean, I could tell you, it created a bond, just right. a friendship. And it was a blessing to go through the process with all of them. And it really benefited all of us right. to work together. 
And it helps us now on this side to even work together moving forth right. as elected officials. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that because of the fact you can't be everywhere. No, you can't. You can't. Um, and you have to, as I said a few minutes ago, have that village. Yes. So in addition to the family and friends, being able to work collaboratively with your fellow candidates. And let me add the, the precinct chairs and the yes. party members of the party and people in the community, all of that just work together to make the perfect mix mm -hmm. to get out the vote. Right. <laughs> and get to the Absolutely. people. And this time uh, being in a presidential election yes. was really a big thing. Yes. And then trying to get everybody, I understand, to vote all the way down the ballot other than just stopping at the president. Yes. Because many people were not really educated enough to know sometimes about the other candidates, and I understand that's where knocking on doors really helped. Yes, it did, because the old adage of what's further down the ballot is closer to your front door. Right. We had to make sure that our constituents knew that, they understood it, and that they didn't just vote for Biden and walk out. That right. they look at even the statewide races, our right. you know people running for railroad commission, our court of appeal candidates, and on down to us local races. So... Um, knocking on those doors helped saturate that message out. And we really did have a good representation of votes down the ballot. Right. Not the best, not perfect, but it was better than what it had been in years. And we'll keep on improving on that in years to come. Yeah. I also understand in educating people about voting. Yes. Uh, about <clears throat> why to vote, because I, I did find out. And I also looked at the fact that many people, this was their first time ever voting. Yes. I heard that quite a bit. Yes. And that was uh, a common occurrence at the polls. And I'm going to yes. tell you, when we came across a first time voter, we broke out in cheering and clapping right. to really let them know that this was a celebratory moment. Right. And some of them were, you know, <laughs> blushing and trying to walk right. away, but they won't forget right. that we thought it was so important that we celebrated on spot. And I'm hoping that they keep that in mind Absolutely. and come back each and every time that they have an opportunity to vote. Also, you have been giving back quite a bit. <laughs> I mean, through the trail, through, mm -hmm. the, through, through, through you running mm -hmm. during the trail, you all during, especially when COVID hit. Yes. This was something, this was something that hit the world. Yes. And in doing so, you all had a lot of food drives. My yes. God. Yes. A lot of just uh, 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 COVID drives, you know, mm -hmm. COVID testing, free mm -hmm. COVID testing, mm -hmm. just things like that. Why so? Well, I will tell you this. Um, I've been working in the community prior to running for office, right. and I've you know, said this throughout my campaign. It wasn't just candidate community service. Mm -hmm. I've spent many years working in uh, youth ministry, helping children, right. back to school bashes, doing everything that I can to help underprivileged children, in addition to coaching uh, youth track, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with you know, the issues of being a coach and a mentor on the field. Uh, making sure that I gave back in other aspects of community service. So this was not something just to express right. myself as a candidate, but it was just something that was just a baseline. And then moving into COVID-19, yes. the need is there. When you want to be a public servant, you have to serve. And that means get down dirty and serve the people. Because mm -hmm. when things happen, the constituents look to their leaders to right. meet their needs, which mm -hmm. is, it, it shouldn't be a surprise. That's what you're there for. That's what they voted you in for. So for us, this was an opportunity to do what is needed, meet the needs of the people, serve. And whether it was food drives or even like this set last Saturday, participated in a turkey drive. Right. This is what it's all about. Public service is exactly what it is, serving the public. Mm -hmm. And whether you are uh, employed or hired into a job or elected by way of vote, you have to keep that in mind. So, um, our, our, our fellow candidates, all of yes. us, we had an enjoyable time this summer meeting the needs of the people. And, right. and we'll be you'll be hearing from us soon again coming up in the future. This is not something that we're going to stop. Absolutely. The other thing, too, the need was so vast. Yes, <clears throat> it was. Um, you already have uh, COVID hitting our health needs, but, you know, that rolled into economic impacts. Yes. And, people losing um, their jobs. Losing 40 their million job. people yes. have lost their jobs during this process. Yes. And so whatever you could do to uh, alleviate some of the concerns, I distinctly remember putting food in the back of a car and the children in the car cheering. Yes. That, that lets you know 
what that meant right. to them, what right. that meant to the children. Right. So um, that they were quite aware. They were quite aware of their need right. and quite aware that you were helping to meet their need, right. whether they knew your name or not. Right. But um, that's that's just a part of it. It says to me that we could have been doing this mm -hmm. to you know help our communities prior, prior to COVID nineteen. Yeah. But that also we need to use this as an awakening of helping to meet the needs of people on an ongoing basis right. despite COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, um, those were great days for us. They were long, hot, hard, you know, working days, mm -hmm. but those were great opportunities for us to meet the community and serve. Absolutely. And in going forward and looking that, you uh, had been, even as an attorney, looking back at your own life as a child. Yes. Um so I believe, you know, when I came to your show before, I talked about the struggles that I've had uh, growing up. Um, you know, I know exactly what it is to use food stamps, and I know exactly what it is to have, you know, the government cheese, yes. the corned beef hash in the can, yes. um, the peanut butter, all of that stuff. Yes. And I remember my Aunt Mabel being in the home and getting meals on wheels. They came and delivered meals to her. So. These are all things that I've experienced growing up in my own house, and it's something that I don't detach from. It's something that I appreciate. I don't mind talking about it. And so when I serve, I keep that in mind because I remember the benefit, the blessing that it gave to us. And, of course, you want to be able to, you know, just duplicate the same now in 2020 and beyond to people who need. So Absolutely. Yeah. I love the fact that you never detached yourself from that, and you were very aware and a part of it yes. in doing so. But just think about yourself then and then becoming an attorney. <laughs> well, I, there were many, many steps in between. Yes. Um, some days where I didn't think I was going to be able to make it. Um, you, um, you, there's, of course, going to college. Right. Not being able to afford it, having to take out the student loans and then taking it out again for uh, law school. All of the steps and the struggles that you had to make in between I don't regret it, but I appreciate it so much more, and I value the opportunity. And I'm thankful when I look back from where I came Ooh, and where I am yeah. right now. You know, um, nothing but the Lord, and I'm grateful for it. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with Ms. Bridget Smith Lawson. We'll be right back to The Cam Hill Show after these messages. Ron Carter Cadillac, Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, delivers test drives to your home or office. Like the new 2020 XT4 Luxury Collection, only $299 a month. The new 2020 XT5 Premium Luxury Collection, $399 a month. Or the first ever 2020 XT6 Premium Luxury Collection, just $499 a month. All for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase and choose 0% APR for 60 months plus $2,000 bonus cash with no payments until March 2021. Visit roncartercadillac.com. I'm attorney Willie Powell's. Allow me to express myself with you. If you've been hurt or injured in a car or truck accident, give me a call and we'll get it fixed today. When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. Have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call, Attorney Willie Powell. We'll fix it today. The number is 281-881-2457. Again, that number is 281 281- 8812457. We'll fix it today. Call attorney Willie Powell.
And now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, thank you, family, so much. We are back talking to Fort Bend County Attorney Bridget Smith Lawson. Let's pick up and talk about the job duties. Okay. Well, um, a lot of people don't understand what the county attorney's role is. The district attorney prosecutes criminal matters in Fort Bend County, and that's Mr. Middleton's office, Brian right. Middleton. The county attorney is responsible per the government code, I think it's section 45.179, to represent the county in all civil matters, whether mm -hmm. you're suing or defending, and also to give legal advice to the commissioners, as well as all of the other agencies of government that fall under the Fort Bend County governmental umbrella. In addition, it's responsible for representing um, state agencies like Child Protective Services and Adult Protective Services. So the gamut of the county attorney's office is essentially to support all things county government in Fort Bend. Wow. And um, that could be in a variety of of ways and then also supervise the lawyers and the support staff that's responsible for carrying out that work as well. Wow. That's so, big. Yeah, it is big. Uh, but when you just drill it down to, again, serving the public and doing what's right, uh, you it sounds more simplistic. Right. Now, there's, of course, a lot of laws involved and a lot of policies and, you know, trying to make sure that you make the right decisions on a daily basis. But keeping that underlying theme in mind it helps you to drive to the right answers. Absolutely. And you had been there. You yes. had already been there. Yes. With the, and spoke, speaking of the incumbent that retired and left, you'd been working with him. Yes. Well, he's, he retires at the end of the year, right. so he's still there. But definitely, I've, I've been working uh, with his office for years. Uh, and again, working with the Harris County Attorney's Office, the right. Harris County District Attorney's Office, and all of the other surrounding counties, including Brazoria, Galveston, Walker, uh, Waller, Liberty. Um, it's 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 been a yeah a long road, <laughs> <laughs> literally and figuratively. So, right. And in that run, we were just talking about the your background. We were talking about you going to law school. Yes. We were talking about and let's talk to some of the attorneys mm -hmm. that are maybe new attorneys, mm -hmm. as well as attorneys that are in law school. Okay. And just thinking of public office, if that's a thought. All right. Well, I will tell you this. Um. um Going to law school, obviously, is a big step, and it's a great step uh, for you to take with your career. Now, when I went to law school, I wasn't necessarily just wanting to go into public service, but it just so happened that that's where I landed. I started off in, in private practice. I started off clerking at a small firm and just build uh, and soaked up all of the knowledge and skill that I could. And I would tell you, wherever you find yourself, uh, in law school, make sure you study every subject, take every class seriously, because you don't necessarily know exactly what you'll learn, and you'll be surprised how different things will pop up, and you'll remember, and you'll be able to synthesize it into your practice, whether you're in that particular area of law or not. Whatever job opportunity or clerkship opportunity that you have that comes up, even if it's not the one that you wanted, your dream position, you do your very best wherever you're planted and learn as much as you can wherever you find yourself and you'll be surprised how you will blossom and grow as a lawyer and also that people will know you know your work ethic and that that information and basically just who you are gets communicated out within the legal community sounds like there are a lot of lawyers in texas and in the houston area but when you really take a step back the circle is pretty small so you want to do your best to keep your professional reputation as best as you can. Now, you'll make mistakes. Don't get me wrong, because the practice is the practice. It's learning while you go. But you want to always make sure that you're doing your very best to be the very best lawyer that you can. Be ethical and be fair uh, with your peers and your colleagues. And be fair to yourself and don't be hard on yourself when you don't reach what you thought you should or get the position that you thought you should. There's always... Um, the Lord above who's ordering your steps that can coordinate you and get you to where you want to, maybe not the route that you thought you would take. So if I could just share that bit of advice. There we are. That would be, that's so good. And the reason is, be, and the reason I wanted you to tell people that is because with COVID, many were going to lose their jobs, yes. but there were other areas mm -hmm. that they could go into. 
that I've mm -hmm. heard a lot of attorneys, they were losing their jobs, uh, oil and gas, mm -hmm. you know, in oil and gas, yes. and as consultants, but they were going able to go into other areas. That's right. Um, you know, the one thing about the practice, when we take the bar, there's about 25, 27 different subjects. There's a lot of them on there. And so we have to have at least a working cursory knowledge of mostly every area mm -hmm. in order to pass the bar. So uh, if oil and gas is shutting down, then, you know, go back to other areas that you think um, were interesting to you, that mm -hmm. you could make a living off of, and also that you'll be satisfied in working in. So I would encourage anybody who's in that transition Absolutely. that they don't be discouraged. Just stay at it, stick with it, work hard, and you'll be surprised how opportunities will come your way, even right. when you're not looking. Absolutely. So many people are now looking at, uh, as still we're breaking ceilings. That's right. In 2020. Yes. How does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It's a great thing, but it's, it's also kind of sad that right. in 2020, we're still talking about black people still having firsts right. after being in this country for hundreds of years. Not that we didn't have anybody else qualified right. before, but um, just being able to break through those hidden and unseen barriers to get there. So um, that's kind of the, the bittersweet side of it, but I'm so grateful to be in an opportunity to make Texas history, uh, to be in an opportunity, uh, or in a position rather, to serve so many people in Fort Bend County. Mm -hmm. um, it's a blessing. I I'm truly humbled and honored. <laughs> Your children see you. Yes. And they were on the campaign trail yes, with, you, with your husband. Yes, they were. As I said, you need the whole village. So, yes, they, they saw that. They, um, they saw the days when I was discouraged. Right. Um, when things happened that were not there. Right. Uh, and it's amazing. Children pick up on things. You don't even have to give them all the details. Right. They knew it when they saw it. Um, so, um, but one thing I think that they learned and I hope that they learned is the, the, the ability to be resilient, mm -hmm. uh, to keep it going and keep it moving. You see it duly noted, but you don't let it stop you. Right. And both of my daughters, they saw that throughout the process. Um, my oldest is 14 and the youngest is 11. And, uh, I'm grateful that they were able to, uh, have that experiential learning mm -hmm. and not just mama telling you so, right. but them actually seeing it. Right. And learning for from themselves. It. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked at the job duties and we were speaking about the advice that we would give that you would give to other people that had ever been, you know, thinking of mm -hmm. public service mm -hmm. and just how it was in Fort Bend County. But in Fort Bend County is vast. Yes. Seven hundred and sixty thousand people, I believe. Yes. Um, the most diverse, one of the most diverse counties in uh, the country, yes. not just in Texas. And I believe it's the eighth largest county in Texas. It so mm -hmm. um, it's it's a big place and it's steadily growing by leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, just when you think about that in terms of numbers and us being right next to Harris County, we're at the uh, epicenter of just growth and development mm -hmm. and that's something that we all should be proud of uh, as residents of Fort Bend and that we all should um, want to have an opportunity to invest ourselves in uh, so public service yeah there are opportunities to if you don't even work in the county system or state system there's opportunities to serve even the public in working in your political party. Yes. I know the Democratic Party here in Fort Bend has, uh, with the leadership of Cynthia Ginyard, has been making uh, strides to make sure that people are registered to vote, that right. they're civically engaged, and even outside of politics, getting involved in community events, community activities. I talked about volunteering with the, um, the track league. There are so many kids and youth out there that need mentors, that need people to help them along the way in addition to their parents and their family and just having that full um, circle around you to support you from all different angles. They don't forget it. And that's a right. way of investing in the public, serving the public. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I love the fact when you were speak, when you speak about that, because we don't look at that no, many times. We don't, we don't see it until, or we don't, it doesn't register until it's time to run. Yes. So during this period of time, just like presidential election, mm -hmm. four years, we need to prepare now for registered voters. Yes, exactly. You, you know? need to prepare now. I've, yeah. 
you know, 2024 is coming right yes. now. It's coming. So we need to look at what we've learned from this last election right. cycle and improve upon it going mm-hmm. forth. And if you're planning to run for office, know that you need to be able to look at yourself and assess what you have done from a, a, a point of serving the public, whether it's personally or professionally, to see that if if that's really in you. Because right. as I said a few minutes ago, this is truly getting down dirty with the people and working and serving. And if you just want a title, mm-hmm. this is not the place to be. Uh, you'll get weeded out pretty quickly. Right. And the voters are really savvy. They, they, they are able to read up on you, see what you've done, and make their assessments, even from the, talking to you and engaging with you. They know and they are keenly aware of who they believe is someone who's acting out of uh, and moving in uh, genuineness versus right. someone who's just trying to ascend to rule and not ascend to serve. So um, take stock and look at those things when you're considering moving forth and running for office. And then also as we look forward to looking at who our leaders will be in 2022 and beyond. So Right, yeah. absolutely. And I think also I love the fact that you looked at yourself and said uh, the preparation. Yes. That you were prepared. Yes. And, you know, um, as I said, I had to ask myself why not. I had to look at what I've done and looked at the position and um, looked at, you know, just basically where God had me to assess my mm-hmm. preparedness because one thing's for certain it's a lot of time and a lot of resources wasted if you are not prepared and um, you don't want to expose yourself right in a negative way if you're not prepared and that's not to scare anyone and it's almost like this is there's really no absolute just perfect right. timing but you should have the ability to assess to excuse me assess your preparedness and be able to make um allotments and maybe minor tweaks for anything that you're lacking. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, like I said, the family and the friends and supporting you, um, that is something that's key. You need to make sure you have that village around you because you cannot do it alone. Right. You cannot cannot do it, do it alone. And we were talking about when you first started, you just didn't jump out there. You did do a list of people that you thought were close to you as well as colleagues and say, what do you think? You know what I'm saying? You would ask them that. Uh, well, I would. <laughs> I did. And, of course, you know, asking them, you you have to have the friends that are going to cheer you on, but the ones that's going to be like, okay, let's take a step back. Right. Because, you, as they say, you can't have a cheerleader all the time. You need a coach sometimes, right? right? <laughs> so you need that mix of friends who will cheer and coach you at the same time. And, and know, um, when it was first presented to me to run, I didn't just jump out there. I had to take some uh, some uh, moments and time to think and assess things, assess my family, being a mother, being a wife, and working full time. Right. Then also getting permission from my uh, employer to run for office. So um, there's it's it's something that took time, and I'm glad that I took the steps to prepare right. and assess myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Because never to think that it would be a year and eight months. Yes. It's, it's been that long. Yeah. And um, it's almost now that I'm at this point, um, it feels a little different. Not out lit dropping, not out, you know, making those texts and those calls. Um, but it, it did take a while. I had a primary. I had a runoff and then the general election. And then, of course, months before the election, making sure that I was in the community meeting people and getting my message out because it is about getting your message out, getting your brand out and meeting people. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about a County as big as Fort Bend, um, just knowing somebody that knows somebody is not enough because you'll find that the hundreds of thousands of people that are going to the polls, you have to be able to meet them on some level uh, to connect with them, to even let them know that you're on the ballot and that Mm -hmm. you're someone viable that they should consider to vote for. And that takes time. Mm-hmm. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes resources. But uh, more importantly, time. So, yeah, a year and eight months. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned that you ran and then you had a runoff. Yes. I Not did. each person had the runoff, but you did. So yes. that's another uh, making sure others come back out. That's right. That's to right. vote. That's right. In the primary, I had two other opponents. 
and I came out with uh, 45% of the vote against two others. And then in the runoff in July, which was pushed back because of COVID, um, I got 65% of the voters, uh, which was a resounding right. yes to from the constituents. Back, right, to yes. bring them back out. To bring them back out. and uh, During we, COVID. Yeah, I <laughs> believe we had maybe about 36,000 yes. um, total uh, that voted in my race. Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, yeah, just to get people back out in the middle of COVID, in, in the middle of the yes. summer, <laughs> to the come to the polls in right. the heat, and um, made it through the runoff, and then of course the general mm -hmm. step and repeat. Right, another run. <laughs> yes, another yes. run, and uh, we had an outstanding voter turnout in Fort Bend. I believe the number was seventy three percent. Yes, uh, but uh, an outstanding uh, t voter turnout, and. Um, the voters came and, and they spoke and they made their voices heard and, and wow. selected the candidates, which included right. me. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, we want to reiterate, let's make sure about the calls. You can call in uh, 346-874-7267. That's uh, 346-874-7267. It should be at the bottom, but I want to reiterate Please call in, congratulate uh, Attorney Bridget, and just tell her how much you love her, care about her, and just that. If you want to ask questions, give her a call. Sure. So, and we'll take those until the end. But right. yeah, we really, we congratulate you on Thank everything. You so but Thank in you. looking at this, uh, women are really, you got, you ladies are really hitting the ceiling. <laughs> yes, we are. We are. And we had a solid group of qualified candidates, yes. um, as I said. We have Carmen Turner, who yes. is our tax assessor-elect. Uh, we have Kalee Morgan, who right. is uh, judge-elect for the 505th. You've got Tamika Carter, who's judge-elect, uh, Judge Janet Heppert as well. And we had some excellent candidates who unfortunately didn't make it. We had Jennifer Cantu, yes. who ran for Commissioner Precinct 1, exceptionally qualified. We are hoping that she runs again. Yes. Uh, she had a great race and she's more than ready to lead yes. and serve. And so we're hoping the best for Jennifer. So, but we had a great slate of women yes. uh, and we had some great guys as well. <laughs> <laughs> we have Eric Fagan, yeah. of course, our, our newly elected uh, sheriff. We had Nabil Scheich, yes. uh, who is our constable precinct. And four, both of them broke elected, the ceiling. Both of them. Um, or history. Yes. Both of them are history. Eric Fagan been the first uh, African-American male um, sheriff since Reconstruction. And the bill, our first um, Muslim-American yes. constable here in Texas, and I believe nationwide. He's got to... Yes. Uh, I got to check that, but yeah. I, he's made history. So, yes. Uh, but some just great people on the slate, more than qualified, um, and uh, we're just so grateful, all of us, to be yeah. here at this point and that the voters entrusted us with leadership. Absolutely. And like we were saying, just the collaboration, just the running together, just yes. having the, uh, uh, that's and the family. That's yes. a family. You yes, guys it are is. family because each one of you, once winning, of course, you all knew about exactly what each person's job duty was. That's right. How, uh, how uh, qualified they were. Yes. And just speaking on their behalf, too, in uh, doing that. That's right. And, and let me not forget Judge Tina Watson. Yes. And she's been a trailblazer for yes. us because even when um, Democrats weren't winning races, she was out here breaking up the hard ground, yes. uh, running for office. And she actually came in in 2018 when yes. we had the wonderful 19. winnings yes. yes, of the 19 judges in Harris County. And then we had KP George here, County Judge Brian Middleton. Julie Matthews, mm -hmm. Tony Wallace, and um, Judge Sherman Hatton, in addition to Judge Wallace. So um, just so many of us right. and to be proud of, um, to um, celebrate. Because right. this is, I, you know, I may make it look like it was an easy <laughs> road, but sitting here in a dress and, and, and makeup, that's not what we look like on a right. regular <laughs> daily basis. It was a struggle. Right. Uh, but um, we're thankful for it. Don't yeah. get me wrong. It was a blessing. It really was. So. Absolutely. We'll be right back with attorney Bridget Smith Lawson. We'll be right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages.
Ron Carter Cadillac, Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, delivers test drives to your home or office. Like the new 2020 XT4 Luxury Collection, only $299 a month. The new 2020 XT5 Premium Luxury Collection, $399 a month. Or the first ever 2020 XT6 Premium Luxury Collection, just $499 a month. All for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase and choose 0% APR for 60 months plus $2,000 bonus cash with no payments until March 2021. Visit roncartercadillac.com. I'm attorney Willie Powell's. Allow me to express myself with you. If you've been hurt or injured in a car or truck accident, give me a call and we'll get it fixed today. When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. Have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call, attorney Willie Powell's. We'll fix it today. The number is 281-881-2457. Again, that number is 281 281- 8812457. We'll fix it today. Call attorney Willie Powell. To the Cam Hill Show. Hey, family, I want to reiterate if you've been trying to call in, call in now. 346 874 7267. 346 874 7267. Please call in. Congratulate my friend, Attorney Bridget Smith Lawson. So we were just talking about that. I had some people, they want to call in and they want to talk to you. But in doing so, we were looking at breaking the ceiling. Yes. We just spoke about that. Yes. But you've broken it for Texas. Yes, I have. Um, Being the first black female county attorney elected in the state, Um, in addition to Fort Bend, but uh, statewide and you know, there's Texas is a very diverse state. I mean, you can we live in the Houston area, which is a very um, urban area. You've got other uh, urban pockets right. such as the Dallas area, San Antonio, mm-hmm. um, Austin area. But when you start getting out to Midland, Odessa, right. and whatnot, <laughs> you know things look a lot different. Right. Um, uh, gratefully, with my position that I've had with the state, I've had an opportunity to see a lot of the hill country mm-hmm. uh, going out, you know, to Kerrville and Georgetown and whatnot for different um, sessions, different seminars and conferences. In addition to up uh, the Texas border with Louisiana, Jasper County, Newton, Jefferson, mm-hmm. all of that, which I was responsible for at one point, um, you'll see the, that Texas is very diverse right? in terms of um, cultural, social, economically, uh, but to make this step. I'm very grateful right? Uh, and um, to be a part of Texas history. Yes. It's, it's just a blessing. Yeah. Uh, it's an honor. Um, and I just look forward to making sure that I do the best that I can for Fort Bend residents. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the good part about it, you're able to show others. Yes. And young children. Yes. That it can be done. It can and be it done. it has been done. It has been done and mm-hmm. it can be done. There are times where I said a little while ago where you might feel discouraged, you might feel disconnected or that maybe the pieces of your life are not matching up to where you thought it should keep pressing and keep working. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, um, I wasn't looking for this position. Yeah, I didn't. 
I didn't seek it out. It came to me. Mm -hmm. And kind of like, you know, when you're just down in the weeds working, yeah. sometimes you don't get an opportunity to take a, a look and assess. But um, if you keep your work ethic mm -hmm. uh, pristine and keep it polished and keep your skill set ready, when opportunities do come, you will be ready. Absolutely. And um, so if I can just tell anybody that little bit of encouragement to just hang on no matter how um, disconnected where your position may seem from mm -hmm. your ultimate goal and your dream. You never know how things will pan out. How right. will, that, that long road will get you there still. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. And being in politics is a lot different than being uh, in public office, civic duty, just the person working. Exactly. Um, I've always said this, getting this position was not just applying for the job, interviewing, it was several interviews with every voter, right? Because <laughs> when you think about it, those yes. are all going to be people that are hiring you right. by way of the vote. And also, uh, public service is a calling, number right. one. Uh, you can't just take this work lightly, whether you're employed or elected, because there is a life behind every decision that you make. There's a family that's being impacted. So you have to take it serious. But there is a difference between being employed yes. where you just apply higher interview based solely on, you know, credentials, qualification versus the elected process, mm -hmm. which has a lot of um, other influences that are in the process. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. No, 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 no. I, I understand that so much. And then getting voters out to vote, the yes. ones that had not been registered. That's right. You were really uh, serious about registering voters. What? I saw that yes. so well. Yes, we were trying to push out the message. The Democratic Party did a great job mm -hmm. of uh, getting new voters registered. Right. Uh, but just making sure that people knew that you can't pass this opportunity, that this election was won um, oh that was, as they said, one of the most important elections of our yes. times and our lives depended on it. Mm -hmm. Making sure you got that message out. So even the people who were registered would not sit at home. Right. Um, I remember making calls while I was at the polls to people mm -hmm. who had not voted. And a um, funny thing, I went to a high tower one day and one of my um, team uh, team members told me that someone was looking for me. And when I went up and introduced myself, she's like, you called me the other day and told me to come vote. And I just wanted to meet you. And we took a that. picture. But that's just an example of how your connection with people oh to get God. them out is Absolutely. so impactful. Absolutely. Uh, I wanted to uh, say that you really, as well as the others, were so pivotal in that point. Yes. And just thinking about the layer of COVID, many yes. people did not want to come out mm -hmm. and they did not want to get out of their cars. Mm -hmm. That was another thing. Mm -hmm. And I understand where, you know, in certain places in Harris County was part of the drive through one place. And then, yes. you know, they tried to stop that because people were very adamant and not getting out, you know, of the car. And just uh, making people aware of where to go. Yes. Would they have to be in line? How the preparation, if they were in line, yes. what to bring with them? Yes. Uh, I will tell you this. On each and every last one of my push cards at the polls, I had a little uh, QR code for people to scan so they yes. can see their polling places so that they can map it out. Mm -hmm. and, and if they came to one that was crowded, they could scan it and then find one that the lines were not as long. Uh, Smart Financial was a, a great mega voting right. center because uh, even on the days where the lines were long, people got in and out um, really quick. Mm -hmm. I was there on the first day that the polls opened at High Tower when unfortunately we had um, a problem with the machines uh, and the lines were long and wrapped around the building. But the resilience of the voters who were in line, the they stage. were not getting out. Yes. Uh, they did whatever they needed to do to stay in that line. Um, one of my cousins was in the line at the time. <laughs> I think it took him six hours to vote, but he voted. Mm -hmm. And um, that was just, to me, an uh, indicator of how strong, strongly the voters felt about casting their ballot, that they were going to be in that line no matter how long it took. Now, thankfully, we were able to get uh, the issues resolved with the, uh, right. the machines so mm -hmm. that we did not have that that scenario duplicated on uh, subsequent days. But, um, yeah, the polls were jam-packed. <laughs> Absolutely. With people. <laughs> Let's do this. And looking in your camera right here, 
What would you like to leave with the viewers? I, I would tell you all again, number one, thank you for your votes and your support for myself and for all of the other uh, qualified candidates that you have elected into office. We are happy to serve and grateful to be here. Um, please keep us in prayer as we move to this next stage of actually being in the elected position. And uh, I would tell anybody who's out there who's considering running or considering public service, please don't let go of your dream. Work hard uh, to achieve it. Don't be discouraged. And also be able to evaluate, you know, maybe this, the county attorney role is not for you, but there are so many other areas and opportunities for service in our community, whether you're serving the children in your community by way of helping them with um, their schools, adopt the school, or, you know, coaching on the side, and even uh, hosting our community service projects like we've got the upcoming holiday season coming, we've got turkey giveaways, toy drives, whatever you can do to serve. You'll be surprised that the fabric of what we do does not start always with the big positions, but it starts with us as neighbors and us as church members and people in our community connecting and meeting the needs of people, even on the smaller scale. So let's be encouraged and let's work to build and support each other during this time, during this COVID-19 time and then also the holiday season and beyond, because we know that the needs of people don't end when the new year rolls in, they keep going and we need to be able to meet the needs and serve the needs of our community in season and out of season. So again, thank you for voting for me and for all of the other candidates so that we can have the opportunity to serve you in elected roles. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, family, for just tuning in. We appreciate you so much on tomorrow. Corman Turner, she will be here. She's the first African-American woman to take on to become Fort Bend County Tax Assessor Collector. And she'll be here tomorrow, 1230 to 1.30. See you then. Bye.